Hey goblins, what is up? All right, so we're making a Minecraft video. This is our Minecraft inner world. Yeah, so I'm basically just gonna go around and show you the main structures, explain a little bit about them, and you know, who lives there, what it's like, and probably learn a bit myself because I don't really live in this part of the inner world. This is beige. I live kind of underground from all of this, <laughs> to put it in perspective. Though we are building the underground part as well. That is a work in progress. So yeah, 281 me megabytes? Well, M, whatever unit of measurement that M stands for. 281, which I think is big, probably. I don't know. I don't know the standards for Minecraft. Also, yeah, I know that we should probably be using a screen capture app, but I don't know how to do that, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we are severely technologically impaired, so sometimes we have to take very unconventional approaches to how we do things, like putting a tripod in front of the TV, as I did today. So I don't know what this is, I don't know what they were building, but... Uh, yeah, what the flip is- oh, it's a building. It's a building. Okay, I was not here before. Let me take you over to one of the main parts first. Oh god, where is it? Wait a second, oh. I know which direction the numbers go. Like, zero, zero is where everything is really at. There we go. So we've got a tower over here, some pyramids over there. I'll show you those in a minute. This is kind of a mini version of the real thing, which I might show y'all. Yeah, there's a lot in this that we are not going to show you because we've also built a lot of the structures and such that are, yeah, very trauma-based and not very healthy. <laughs> so we're just going to wait until those are a little more developed to show that. Now, we might show some of those, but That'll be in time, <laughs> probably next video. This here is the west. It kind of looks like two mountains, but this one has been cut off at the middle and a city has been built upon it. Most of these are not to scale. Like this is a pretty good sized city about, you know, two, three miles across each way. And it's full of houses kind of in this format where they're kind of all nestled against each other with little trails between them. I'll show you a little bit about this. So this is where kind of everything happens. Most altars have been to the west if They've had good communication with everybody else. And this is kind of what some of the buildings look like. Lofts. <laughs> they look like lofts with fireplaces. And there should be furniture in here, but Minecraft doesn't have a lot of furniture. <laughs> yeah, here's another example of one. I think this one's a little bit better. More detailed fireplace. a loft here and most people have these beds that are like giant wood boxes and they're filled with animal skins because the main food source here is deer there's a ridiculous amount of them just all over the place so that's what everyone just they, they eat those <laughs> yeah there's a few restaurants here and there a few shops that's the Capitol building. 
That was Morpheus's old house. This is, this is the school. It's where Dare went to school. That's Rem and Sargon's house. Yeah, this will be kind of an overview because I don't want to get too into detail. I don't want to make this gigantic. Oh, all right, I'll show you. <laughs> okay, we'll just start with Morpheus's house. It's very white, white stone, and it very much resembles uh, a old, an old hotel room that our grandparents used to get almost annually, like the same one at the same hotel, and that was a thing during the summer. You just gotta like look out over here. Yeah, this is all full of like sciencey stuff because he was way into that. Yeah, sorry if I have to turn back around like in a circle. OCD is kind of like that. I think I have more of the OCD symptoms than most others. Rip. <laughs> Then I will show you Rem and Sargon's house. It's got the flags. It's really fancy. Bougie AF. <laughs> and they even have a balcony. Which is epic. It's really difficult to go downstairs in this game sometimes. <laughs> yeah, and then the school, but that's one of those things that I don't think we're gonna show you the inside of, so I'll just show you the outside of it. it looks kinda like that, I think. That's as close to it as we can get. <laughs> I think that counts. We'll just go in order of appearance. A lot of these are super in progress. And yeah, this is the east. Even though it was the second place to appear, it is not the second thing we built. Very much in progress. And this here, this green thing, we call it the ghost train line. It's a thing that connects all throughout this game, kind of along the ground makes you drive through the whole thing. Kind of like how the ghost train drives. So that was kind of our inspiration for this little trail thingy. To kind of make it easier to travel between things as well and also to see where we're at. So the east is kind of like a tower of stone with shells of stone. It looks kind of like the tower in The NeverEnding Story, a little bit, but it's more made out of stone, <laughs> like a mountain. And there used to be two mountains here, but those are now those pyramids that you may have seen earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the far... This is the east, this is the regular east, not the far east. The far east is ocean-y. <laughs> and this regular east is very, very, they're very strict. Not very sociable. This is not the place you would want to go to be a tourist. The west, yeah, you can totally be a tourist there. They will be okay. You can hang out, have a good time. This place, you gotta be on your toes. <laughs> They have such strict, like, social mannerisms and stuff. It's a little bit hardcore. Yeah, so not a lot of people live there. <laughs> yeah, most people were there for those mountains. And once the mountains were gone, they were just like, I, I'm out. <laughs> and that was that. And next I'll take us to the far west. This is sort of oriented how things are. These three things are probably the closest to accuracy that we have in this game. These three first structures. And also that. That's kind of where it is in relation to the mountain. But everything else is kind of built with the terrain that the Minecraft map spawned. So it kind of is all over the place. 
but we'll describe what things are and the order in which they appeared and such. And this is the Far West. <laughs> it is definitely in progress. This is a very rich tree full of lots of branches that we are currently working on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can see this thing from space. It's gigantic. It's called the jugular tree. And on the inside, it's kind of carved out like a house. But that is also very in progress. <laughs> and we've got things that are attached. We've got Benjamin's workshop right there. He works on lots of robots. I didn't realize this would probably make me dissociate, but that's all right. <laughs> and then I will show you next the far east, the oceany one. And I will show you where Hollow lives. <laughs> because I know people want to see that. That's He's got this nice little cave going on. So we've got this repeating shape that we see a lot. We really messed this thing up, but it's supposed to be a triangle with the cutout of the triangle facing downwards. We got close enough, so we're okay with it. <laughs> this is more for our reference than for 100% accuracy. So yeah, nothing is really built into that. As far as we know, I actually, upon thinking about that, um, there probably is, and they're probably just masking it from the rest of the system and an animal spawned on top of that, too. <laughs> wow. Yet yeah, down here, we got the cave. I could have sworn we marked it off with some blue shapes, but I guess not. Yeah, Hollow's got this cave. And lots of places where he stashes the blue things. We tried to put a lot of the objects down, but we kept, you know, reabsorbing them because Minecraft works that way, I guess. And, yeah. Lots of cubbies for all the blue things he's collected. <laughs> and I don't think he has this tank in our world, but he really wanted to build it, so we let him. <laughs> and it's awesome. I forget how you get in there. Uh, you go up. Oh, yes. And down. And there's a squid or an octopus or whatever. And all the blue plants. Because they kept dying if we tried to put them on the regular ground. So he was all like fish tank. And that is that. That is the four regions there. The rest of the living spaces are carved out into these cliff faces and that's the far east we marked it off with this flag this does not exist in real life this was just for us to find the the bay because this is a large map there's a lot of things here and it's very spread out now so we kind of have to have things to mark where it is or else we actually kind of lose things. Which really sucks. I think we lost a couple of things. But that's alright. We rebuilt those, I believe. <laughs> okay. Now this is somewhat of a mountain valley. Pretend there's a mountain ridge that goes down like this. And that's actually where that building is in reference to the mountain range, which is bomb. I'm glad that worked out that way. So it's got a lower part, the river that goes through it, a little mini version of itself, kind of stacked, a mini version of this tree, kind of like their, uh, their stronghold here. And this river is kind of interesting because it goes from here, and then it flows up, across, and then down. 
there's a pool there too. And it then rejoins the river and keeps going. And then there's there's more forest here. This is like a green forest, not snowy, kind of like, almost like Pacific Northwest, but the parts that are less rainy. <laughs> Then on to the north. All right, this is the north and it is definitely another thing in progress. This is kind of like a mountain here with a small mountain range creating a circle which holds all the things. We got a stage, we got Liberty's Club, Vera's, uh, Ulysses House, State Farm. <laughs> okay, there's this ongoing joke in our inner world. Uh, well, kind of in our friend group as well. We have an alter named Jake and he He's kind of like us. He was like a bud tender, but with, you know, more substances because our inner world doesn't have the same laws as the outer world, of course. And we made a joke that his bar should be called State Farm. And then he named it that as a joke, but it just stuck. And now this is State Farm. And now that I got a little bit more space on my phone from deleting old videos, as per usual, we can continue on. I think I'm going to go back to that building I described earlier. Oh wait, no, I should show y'all where Parsifal lives. Yeah. All right, we're on the way anyway. It's right over here. Come on now, spawn. What is this, you ask? That is another one of the underground things that we may or may not show. I haven't decided yet. Oh yeah, this is Utopian, I'll show you that in a minute. And also, Dystopian, which is over here once it spawns. <laughs> but first things first. Yeah, there's Dystopian. And going all over this way, we got this other building, this is not where Parsifal lives, but it is where a few, a lot of altars and fragments lived, mostly fragments, and they've since integrated, so it's kind of just empty now. Parsifal lives on a floating land mass. <laughs> oh yeah. He kind of just wanted to do his own thing, so he picked up some land and took it. <laughs> Yeah, he's got these kind of building-like tent things and super chill. Looks like an absolute hippie zone and it is super cool. Yeah. God, I completely forgot about Utopian and Dystopian until I saw them. I've got really bad communication with the rest of the system. <sighs> I'll figure it out sooner or later. So these are all, of course, still in progress too. This is dystopian. There is this thing called the dog fighting rink and there are no dogs involved in the making of this fighting ring. It's people. The dog thing is metaphorical. And this is basically like Vegas on crack. <laughs> That is the best way, most accurate way I can describe dystopian is like Vegas on crack. Anything could happen. There is parts of the buildings are broken. We're gonna have fun pretending to be like a monster, like Godzilla smashing some buildings because there are corners missing off of some of these. <laughs> and I think Chase is to blame for that. So this is utopian. It is north from Dystopian. They're alongside a coast, but pretend this is ocean. And then this is the land. 
and then the far west is actually over here. So these two are actually supposed to be way over here, but you know how Minecraft works. This is a great place to build dystopian, and then utopian just fell afterwards. <laughs> this is utopian, as you've seen many a time already. <laughs> it's basic, it lives up to its name. This is a very calm, chill zone where altars go if they just want to not be in the chaos anymore. All these are solar powered, these are the sun absorbing light glass panels, and they're all different colors. And there's shops and everything. We're working on a little shop there. And it's really awesome. We got a bunch of apartments going on in here. It's pretty great. We will show more detail in depth in future video if requested. And now on to the thing. Oh yeah, what is this tower you ask? This is Corvid's tower. It floats. It kind of lifted off one day and it has chains all along the bottom. So it kind of looks like a squid but with a bazillion chains on the bottom. And it looks like the, uh, kind of like the mansion at the beginning of the Scooby-Doo zombie movie, which really freaked us out as a kid, but I think Corvid liked it. <laughs> of course she would. She loves all scary movies. This here is the priesthood building. Some but definitely not all altars are involved in kind of this mini secret society in our system that kind of runs everything. But not completely. They're kind of just in charge of this, this Vanaheim planet. <laughs> this one planet in our solar structure of a system. So, these originally were the two mountains by the east. How did they get this way? So, when Farkas, like, he used to be the one in charge of the East, and then Sujin took it over, and now it is his. He is the Emperor now, and he's doing a real good job at it. Farkas, not so much. He was very emotionally compromised at the time. <laughs> and so he took those two mountains, somehow he lifted them up and moved them. And then, one day very recently, like, Farkas moved these things years ago, about three years ago. And then they just shed the stone, became pyramids, and started floating. And there's a guy that lives in this one <laughs> who is not Farkas. There were the two mountains originally, and we just focused on this one because, you know, the other one was probably just spare storage space or whatever. That's what our thoughts were about that. I think we were being urged to not think about the possibility of there being an altar living in that. Yeah, and I just totally just dissociated. Wow. Yeah. So, this is a tower where one of our introjects lives. He is from the Aragon series. He goes by the name of Damien, but he is one of the shades, like the dark sorcerer ones from the series. And these are the moons. <laughs> these are the moons. Oh yeah. These here are moons. They're definitely still in progress. There are two moons on this planet. I don't know if they have names or not. I know one is inhabited very much so, and I think one is slightly less so. And then I'm going to show you a better, more accurate to scale size of those pyramids. Because we wanted to be able to actually build all the rooms on the inside because it's very important to us for our own healing and figuring out how our system be 
that generate. Just vibing. <laughs> I think it's this way. We spend so much time waiting for things to load on this game, but it is so worth it. Sometimes being able to actually kind of put ourselves in those places makes it easier to sort things out. Also, it can be very bad because people can build the more not good places and make us go there <laughs> mentally and then sort of physically, I guess. Yeah, altars can really mess with each other sometimes. Yeah, there's that. I don't know what that's a marker for, but that's some sort of marker. We have a bunch of like color-coded markers Oh, I think that's supposed to be... No. No, I don't know what that is. Dang. Why the fuck you hiding? Why you always hiding? Mm, oh my god. Stop fucking hiding. Oh, this is a spaceship that we are working on. Oh my god. Oh, that's amazing. Whoa. This is called the behemoth. This is the behemoth. And it is a common zone where all the altars can go. And then last but not least, before my phone tells me there is no more space again, this is how you get to the underworld kind of. There's a few tubes that lead right down from the surface to the center planet. And it is kind of like this, except, you know, all around. And this whole thing is a planet on the inside of the planet. It's where I'm from and it's where I live. I think I'd like to get up to where everybody else is, but I don't know if I can. Most people from under here who go up usually end up somehow back down. So I don't know how that would work. Either way. It's really interesting having these giant tubes. They're actually circular and like metal and tunnels. And it's most easy for people or dragons who have wings, they fly downwards, otherwise you kind of just fall. <laughs> They're very slick tubes, and I think that's kind of to discourage people from climbing. Oh man, that's terrible. All right, so we also have two train tracks, like we have another one along with the ghost train, this is kind of one for viewing things from more of an aerial view. We can definitely make a video about this in the future if you'd like. Let us know down in the comments. And let us know what else you'd like to see or know about. If you'd like more details or more of a closer view, there's rooms and stuff inside this mountain. And the tower and so much. We could really get into here. Also that. <laughs> That's underground. It's a whole store that's underground. It's like the size of a gigantic Walmart. It's about that far out. <laughs> but it's all underground and it looks like it's just a little shed until you walk down the door and it's just all underground. But right now it's just a really messy cave. Right now it's just very unrefined, kind of like underneath the mountain but slightly less so. So thank you all for watching. That is all I've got for today. Uh, feel free to leave any questions or comments below. That's how we get a lot of ideas and stuff. Um, for example, 
We're planning on making a video about sleep and DID, but we don't know exactly what people are wondering about that. You know, what questions there are to be answered. So feel free to leave some of those and any other questions really that you have down in the comments. There are no dumb questions. Everyone starts out somewhere and it's not bad to not know something yet. It just means you don't know something yet. And that's all right. So thanks again for watching and hit subscribe to become a goblin if you haven't already done that. And then if you want to know what we're doing, hit the notification bells because we are just erratically posting at this point. I don't know what a schedule is, LMAO. I'm working on that though. <laughs> it's all good. Check out the description if you'd like. If you already haven't for the trigger warning list. And I don't know who else has done Minecraft in our world things. So if you've done your inner world in Minecraft, tell us in the comments and we'll give you a shout out in the next following Minecraft videos. Breaking the law, 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 breaking the law.